everyone, and welcome to another live episode of Level Up Law, where every Tuesday at noon, South Carolina Legal Services is leveling up your legal knowledge about an area of law that we practice in. Um, well, this month, December, is Identity Theft Awareness Month, and so we'll be um, talking about identity theft in a two-part series today and then next Tuesday as well. But before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that this is not legal advice and we're not your lawyers. This is just general information for the public, but it's important information and we hope that it will um, help you keep in mind that this episode, as with all the others, um, will be recorded and you can check it out on our YouTube channel uh, to get more information or just review. I'm Susan Engels. I'm the Consumer Law Unit Head and Senior Staff Attorney here at South Carolina Legal Services. I'm here with Kenneth Elliott, our producer of the Level Up Law Show. Um, thanks for being here, Kenneth. He'll make sure that everything is clicking along like it's supposed to. All right, so we have two parts. Um, identity theft, your rights and responsibilities. Um, Want to start out with showing us, uh, showing our Connect card. Uh, there on your screen where you can learn how to apply for our services. You can scan the QR code um, to sign up for our newsletter, donate, do things like that. And then we're on all the social media. And so we invite you to visit us there because we've got a lot of great resources on all of our social media, whether it be um, short uh, bits of information, links to more detailed information. Just go there and check it all out. So it's going to be two parts. Part one today is to prevent the damage or if something happens to stop the damage. And then next week we'll be talking in a little more detail about how to repair the damage, which hopefully um, you'll be able to do if this happens to you. But so important to first prevent that damage and if something happens to stop it. So. Let's talk about preventing the damage. And we're just going to give you some do's and some don'ts about that. So we'll start out with the don'ts because those are always important. Um, don't click on pop ups and notifications. That includes on your cell phone, on email, um, whoops, there you go. Um, all of those kinds of. Uh, things that you might be um, scrolling through and just when things pop up or you get a notification about something, don't always click on it. You need to be sure that it's something that you recognize. And here's another thing, don't reply to calls, texts, emails from a sender that you don't know, right? Um, and as always, with senders that you don't know, how do you figure out that it's not somebody you know? Because sometimes in an email or a text, it sounds very unwelcoming, like it is someone you know. Um, but look at where it's coming from. Look at the email address and see if it's really someone you know or some uh, company that you're already dealing with that you recognize. Another don't is don't give your personal information to just anybody. I mean, you want to really try to keep from giving it at all, but obviously sometimes you do have to give it. Just be super careful with your personal uh, information. So important. All right, here's some do's. All right, let's get positive. Um, always review your credit report regularly. Um, particularly uh, review it regularly if you suspect that there's been identity theft, you're concerned about something that may have happened, um, or if you've been a victim of identity theft in the past. Of course, you do want to always look at your credit report. And remember, you can get a free credit report from all three of the credit reporting agencies um, for free at annualcreditreport.com. That's sponsored by the um, government. It's free, and you can get those anytime. So you want to regularly pull your credit report and look at it, see if there's something you don't recognize. Um, okay, 
before you buy from an unfamiliar website or company that popped up like we talked about before, what you do want to do is stop and check them out, right? I've certainly experienced that. You probably have too, where um, some great information or item that you might want to buy, you know, some advertisement pops up, and you're like, oh, that looks uh, interesting. Um, but as soon as you click on it, or as soon as you uh, maybe try to purchase something if it's a website or something, then they've got your information and they will use it. Uh, so take the time and have patience in, when you're trying to prevent identity theft. Take the time to stop and check these folks out, okay? Um, there's plenty of websites out there like Who Is and um, ways to check legitimate websites, legitimate companies, and you can get a rating. Um, so use those, those sites and make sure before you um, start buying something or reading something on a website that you haven't dealt with before, be careful. Um, shred documents that have your personal information, okay? Um, lots of times we are just maybe ripping it in half and throw it in the trash, or tear off a little piece. You really need to shred things like um, uh, random credit offers that you get. If someone digs into your um, trash can and pulls one of those out, they can apply for that credit in your name and you may never know it, but it's in your name because they, they've got your information. Um, bills that you get, whether it's utility bills, medical bills, um, your insurance um, explanation and benefits that you get, all of those kind of documents that have the slightest bit of um, personal information on it really need to be shredded. So if you don't have a shredder, you're not able to afford one or somehow use one that someone else has, then um, you need to put all of that aside in just a box in your home. And when free shredding events happen, as they often do around South Carolina, um, you need to go take that box and get that stuff shredded. Um, I know that our South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs during Consumer Protection Week every year, I think it's the first week in March, they have shredding events all around the um, all around the state. Sometimes banks will have shredding events for their customers. Um, and so get those documents shredded because that's one of the really quickest ways for um, identity thieves to get your information. Okay. When you are providing your personal information for a legitimate reason, um, especially if it's the first time, maybe for a you know, credit or a car loan, you're opening a bank account, credit card, um, you're um, going to a new medical provider, whatever it might be, uh, read the terms and conditions. Okay? Um, that's so important. And we often just want to skip over it because we say, well, there's nothing I can change about the terms and conditions. But you need to know what they are. And you know, everyone has a privacy policy now. And it's, typically it's a separate document um, that you have to sign. Read it. See what they're doing with your private information. That privacy policy is a, a representation to you of what's going to be done with your personal information. You need to know what that is. Uh, okay, review your bank statement credit card statements, medical bills that come in. You want to do things like you know, make sure that the date is right, make sure that it came on time. Um, you know, make sure all the information is correct. Make sure the doctors that are listed on a medical bill or an explanation of benefits or something like that are doctors that you actually see and that you have seen um, recently. So really review those very carefully. It's real easy to not do that. Everybody's busy, don't have enough time for things, but you really, if you want to prevent identity theft, that's what you need to do. And then, of course, always do assume that these type things are a scam and are not safe and just act accordingly. All right, here's some more do's and don'ts, okay? Um, do create and use strong passwords when you are doing something 
um, online. If you have a um, access to your medical records, which most um, medical providers have now, if you are creating a password for that um, access to your medical records, make sure it's really strong. Um, the longer the better, you know, 12 characters certainly is a good number, but have letters and characters and numbers, capital, lowercase, you know, make it different. Um, and keep your passwords safe. Um, it's important to protect those passwords. You can't give them out to other people. Um, don't have them randomly written down on your desk at the office or something like that. Um, and if you feel like you can't really keep those safe, maybe it's hard for you to remember passwords or keep um, a written version of the password safe, um, there are um, you know, password managers and uh, a lot of people use those and there are legitimate password managers, but there are also people who claim to be legitimate password managers that aren't. And so there is um, staysafeonline.org and they do have a page that's, this is what the government uses and, and all that. And this is where you can find a page that has legitimate password manager um, companies that you can use. And just, you know, shop around and again, read the terms and conditions, right? See what they're gonna be doing with your information and that will help you know what's a good password manager and what's not. Uh, one other do on this page is to use different security questions and different passwords for every account. So you don't want to have the same password on, on every private account that you have. And I'm sure you can guess why. Because once a scammer or identity theft has your password, they'll try it on every other access point that you have. And if you use the same one every time, then that makes it that much easier for them to steal your identity and your personal um, information. Use different security questions, right? Um, lots of times they'll say, oh, you need to choose a security question. You might choose uh, what's your favorite color or what's, you know, what year did you graduate high school, whatever it might be. Um, use a different one every time and use something. Um, and this is down in the don't column down there in the middle. Don't use security questions that people can easily find the answer to, like on social media. You might say what your favorite color is in your profile, or you might have your maiden name there. Um, you might have your high school graduation year. So that's fine if you have that, but don't use that kind of information. Um, to pose a security question or provide an answer to a security question. Really, really important. And sometimes we just don't think about that because we're trying to make it easy on ourselves so we can remember everything. Okay, here's another don't. Uh, don't provide the same personal information over and over again to the same provider um, without a reason. Um, the, the best example that's always given about this is when you go to uh, for example, a medical provider that you see regularly. And often they want to get all of your information again, every time you go to fill out uh, all the forms. And that typically includes your social security number. Now, if this is someone you see regularly, they cut your social security. And you don't want to have it on these random pieces of paper that you don't really know what they're doing with. You hope they're shredding those after they um, get it from you and confirm it in the computer or whatever. Um, lots of times if you don't put it, it's not even noticed that you didn't include that. It's kind of just a standard um, thing that lots of providers do. So don't give that social security number every time. But if they say, hey, you know, we need your social security number on this, then say, well, you know, why do you need it? You, you've already got it. Um, and if they have a good reason for it, you know, maybe all their records have been revamped and they're getting new information from everyone, and you're satisfied that it's a good reason, you know, go ahead and, and provide it. But you know, just be careful about handing out that social security number. That is really, really important. 
and so many identity thieves, scammers, hackers, whatever it might be, will randomly call and, you know, unwittingly, you may give them your social security number when they don't already have it. So be really careful with your social security number because when it comes to identity theft, that is piece number one for an identity theft, uh, thief. Uh, and finally, on this do's and don'ts page, don't give optional information. And, you know, lots of times when you're filling out uh, information on a website that you're going to be using or you know, purchasing online from, um, they ask for some piece of information that says optional, okay? If it's optional, you know, you might not want to give it because it's not required. Um, so keep that in mind. And another don't is to um, don't save your information through an online shopping account. Very tempting. Many of us do it. But the best advice when trying to prevent identity theft, um, when it comes to putting in a credit card on a website, and it says, you know, you can save this credit card for future use. That's real easy to do. And it pops up the next time you're on there. Um, but hey, just take the time to go ahead and put in your credit card information each time. And that is a great way to prevent identity theft. Because if there's a hack and your information is in there, um, saved by you, um, and that's what they're, you know, policy says, then you know you may be out of luck um, when your identity is stolen. Okay, so last but not least, one more do, one more don't. When you're on the internet, try not to use public Wi-Fi when you are doing anything on a computer that has your personal information on there and is not protected. And always make sure that if you are using a computer, whether it's a laptop out at a coffee shop, or a standalone unit at your home, use security software to make sure um, that you've got those kind of protections. Okay, um, a word about uh, monitoring, okay? Um, there are monitoring services that you can pay uh, to monitor your personal information and make sure nothing's getting uh, stolen and that kind of thing. And so there's lots of uh, companies out there who do that. Um, but here's a couple of tips. Shop around for those services. Okay? Read the terms and conditions if you decide to use one. And keep in mind that <clears throat> credit monitoring is different from repairing your credit after identity theft. So um, a, a credit monitoring service will alert you um, to make sure what their terms and conditions say they will do. They may just alert you and not actually repair any damage that was done. So if you're paying a monthly fee and thinking that they're not only going to catch it, but fix it, um, you're probably going to be out of luck. So whatever the charge is, you may want to look at the other way, and that is DIY, do it yourself. Um, set up account alerts, whether it's on your bank account or credit card. Um, use the tips we've already talked about that were in the do slide. And use login protections for when you are logging into an account. This even includes logging into your, your medical chart, logging into your utility bill account. Um, you can use the um, protections that are like the two-factor authentication, a lot of those use now. Um, opt into that because you want to have them send that code to your cell phone or to your email. That can be a good protection. And then also you're always able to place a security alert or a security freeze um, for yourself. You don't need a, a credit a monitoring service to do that for you. Sometimes it's better to do it yourself and keep all those records. It doesn't cost you anything. Okay, now we want to talk about stopping the damage if you are the victim of identity theft. There's some things that you can do. And that is um, what we just talked about. If you 
any kind of a security breach or identity theft, here's four things you want to do. Contact whatever institution, whatever creditor, provider, anyone who um, or account that's been affected by that breach or that theft, or who even might have been. Contact all those. I'm, I'm a victim of identity theft. Um, I need to alert you and change my account, change my debit card, change my credit card, whatever it might be. Um, you can complete an identity theft affidavit and you can find those uh, on the FTC website, identitytheft.gov. We'll talk some more about that next week in part two. Um, but that is um, one thing that you want to do right away. And then you want to report the identity theft not only to the FD, FTC, but right here in South Carolina to our South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs. Um, because they have uh, a great identity theft unit that can be very helpful at this stage of identity theft. And of course, um, you can report it to law enforcement. Um, quite often, there's not anything they can do, um, depending on the level of identity theft or security breach. But it is important to try to go ahead and make that report, even if it's just an informational um, report, so that you can use that with all the paperwork that you may be sending to um, the FTC or Consumer Affairs or um, whoever that information needs to be shared with, um, you know, such as your bank. They need to be sure that you're serious and that your identity really was um, stolen. And then again, the security alert or security freeze is always um, an option if you suspect anything. And really, you don't have to suspect anything to utilize those options, um, but you may, uh, you may want to. Let's talk about what those are, those security alerts and freezes. So a security alert, this is a um, free option that you can um, do with your credit report. You place a fraud alert there. So if someone's uh, pulling your credit report, um, they have to take these extra steps to verify your identity before they can put in credit in your name. If you don't have something like that, it can be really easy for um, different companies, especially those who aren't being super careful, to um, provide credit to someone who is not actually you but is an identity thief. So um, that's one of the things that a um, security alert can do. It does last one year. And it can be renewed, but there's also an extended um, security alert that you can do, or a fraud alert, and that kind of lasts for seven years. Um, and here's how you can place that security alert. Just contact one of the credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experience, Experian, TransUnion, and they will automatically put it on the other two um, when it's a security alert. So that's helpful time-wise, you just make that one contact and it'll take care of all three, um, alerting the uh, someone who's pulling your credit report that there may be some uh, fraudulent activity with your uh, social security number. Okay, now a security freeze is a little bit different. Um, in the security freeze situation, um, they cannot, even access your credit report without your permission. Right? They pretty much have to have you right there in front of them, signing off on them um, using your credit report. Um, you know, these are things like, as we give examples here, utilities, credit cards, insurance companies, all uh, and more require credit checks now. So um, the freeze is not going to affect what you already have. Um, but if you want to apply for new credit or other services, right, then you will need to put a pause on that freeze. And they call it a thaw sometimes. You lift the freeze on your credit. So maybe you're going to shop for a new car and you're going to be shopping for credit for that new car. You can 
lift the security freeze for a certain amount of time, you know, if you're going to say, be looking at cars for two weeks or something like that, you can lift it and then it will automatically, if you give it a, a certain time frame, it will automatically go back into operation after that time uh, expires. And of course, also you can lift it permanently. Uh, the difference here when contacting the uh, credit reporting agencies is you have to contact all three, of, all three of them to place the freeze and to thaw or lift the freeze. So um, this is a little bit more heavy duty, but it may be important depending on your situation. The alert is um, a little less um, restrictive on credit applications. They just have to be sure and verify um, that it's you that's applying for the credit. So those are kind of the two um, things. And we'll talk next time in a little bit more detail about how some of that operates. So that is it for prevent the damage and stop the damage. Next week in part two, we'll talk about repairing the damage uh, that an identity thief can do. Um, let's see if we have any questions. Just double check on that. Let's see. Let's see any questions? Uh, all right, no questions. Um, so thanks everybody for uh, tuning in for part one of identity theft this December. Um, Identity Theft Awareness Month. We appreciate you uh, joining in and don't forget to register for next week's part two, how to repair the damage to the extent that you can when you are a victim of identity theft. All right. Um, hey, scan this QR code if you want to let us know a particular topic that you'd like us to talk about here on Level Up Law. Scan, there's a form that comes up. It's real easy to um, put in your information about what type of law you would like us to talk about. And also one last time, we do want to remind you how to connect with us. Please check it out uh, on social media. Um, you know, TikTok uh, down there at the bottom is a little bit controversial. A lot of people think that you shouldn't be on TikTok, but we believe that um, we are on TikTok for a good reason, and there's, there, are, there is bad on TikTok, but we want to be part of the good that's there, and hopefully the good will outweigh the bad. But we're also on all the other social media. You can find out about what we're doing, events that we're having, um, you know, divorce clinics, debt collection clinics, all kinds of things, and um, how to link to our very voluminous resources that we have here at South Carolina Legal Services on our law help page. Um, all kinds of different um, topics and resources that we have here, and it's all free. We want to help out our uh, community, our general public here in South Carolina, and we hope that you will check all that out. And you can go to our website at www.sclegal.org and register for that next episode if you haven't already. So thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week for another episode of Level Up Law. Thanks for tuning in.